The standard American diet is relatively inexpensive, convenient, and satisfying. Whether it's highly marketed fast food or highly processed packaged foods in the supermarket, what Americans eat has changed dramatically over decades. And it shows. The U.S. has the highest rate of obesity in the industrialized world. It's really expensive to get healthy food in, in the U.S. Fast food is much too accessible. The government can like stop the advertisements, can stop all the bad foods, yet they let it keep going and then they complain about obesity. It's true. The American diet is shaped a lot by what happens here in the U.S. Congress. Where the food and beverage industry has for the past two decades spent tens of millions of dollars lobbying for government regulations that favor its finances. The economics are a big part of it, no doubt about it. Food companies are in business to, to make money. One unfavorable policy could cost a company millions, so former government food policymaker turned lobbyist John Bodie works to keep food regulations at a minimum. It is a major effort. Since 1990, the food and beverage industry has been one of America's biggest political campaign donors, paying out nearly $107 million to both presidential and congressional political campaigns. Last year, $24 million was given to politicians running for Congress. 71% went to Republicans, 29% went to Democrats. In turn, many of those politicians have voted to keep food industry costs low. Since the mid-1990s, $17 billion has gone to crops like corn and soybeans, mainstay ingredients of the junk food industry. Contrast that to just $260 million in subsidies for healthier menu options, like apples or vegetables. Saving a few bucks. And despite mounting data suggesting processed food can lead to obesity, lobbyists have also convinced lawmakers to back voluntary guidelines rather than laws on things like food advertising. If we start regulating in ways that outlaw various foods, what we're really doing is we're, we're denying consumers choice. Those who need to have lobbyists on Capitol Hill are those who come under criticism for the kinds of products they make and the damage they potentially do. Damage which could only get worse, critics fear, given the policies which generally favor food industry wallets, not consumer health. Kimberly Helkett, Al Jazeera, Washington.